again, everybody. You are once again up front with Frank Rothstein on skiescrescentradio.com. That's S-K-Y-E-S, crescentradio.com, located on your internet feed somewhere. We are also streaming and beaming and placing ourselves everywhere you can think of. Facebook, iHeart, Spotify, anywhere else you might get your music from, you'll find us somewhere. We have a whole host of hosts out here, and you can find us anywhere you want. We have a show just for you. Sitting with me, as always, with a nice fancy new background behind her, looking at the Golden Gate Bridge, and sitting in front of it, of course, is Jade Zabrick. Hello, Jade. We're sitting here talking about all that's going on in the world between doing internet business and the stuff we're watching on the news. And yes, everyone... The new big story is, of course, the trial of Derek Chauvin, the former police officer, on trial for allegedly, or until proven otherwise, ale- uh, tried either way, allegedly, supposedly, killed George Floyd la- last year, yeah, and during an arrest. And this is interesting because I'm watching this trial. Not that watching the trials are interesting to me. This is actually, this hasn't got, uh, everyone is sitting behind plexiglass. We're not, we're seeing split screen between the speaking lawyer and I guess the defense team. We're hearing the usual questions and, um, but this is, this is a very important trial. It really is. This is, um, Today's version of the OJ trial, OJ Simpson's trial in 1994. If you were if you were not born at that time and you're listening to me talk about it, if you vaguely remember, if you want to refresh, Google it. OJ Simpson. Um, that, but in that case, we'll say everyone knew he did it and he was acquitted. Where was I? I was in. I was in. My friend's bar, we were packed. There was, it was limited cable. We were, we were packed watching this. I remember when he got acquitted and everybody was, <coughs> yeah, that was some, that was something. But as this trial comes in, into play, um, I saw that video. I read, I read, all, I read a lot of things. You know, I read all the reports. I saw the video from all different angles, all different perspectives. And, I believe he did it. I can't speak for the next person. I believe he did it. I think most people will believe he did it. There are millions of people who are marching around in every city because they believed he did it. Certainly they didn't, they didn't go out there because they didn't think he did it. But okay, I believe so. But in the case of this, because of all that surrounding, of all that surrounding it, and all that has happened from the time of the crime, I can rhyme, I can do rhymes, the time of the crime till today. The world is watching. This isn't like the old days where if there was a security issue, you could move the trial to a new venue because where are you gonna go? The internet is watching, the world is watching. So he's going to jail. I don't know if it's gonna be a slap on the wrist sentence or, or whatever the maximum penalty is given all the, all the charges that he has. Now, I'm not quite, uh, I didn't update myself today on the full list. I believe they put in murder in the third degree. I'm not even quite sure what that is, if you have first degree manslaughter, but okay. They, they have their list of charges. So I'm not quite sure what the maximum penalty is, or whether he gets a, the minimum or the maximum, he is going to jail. And in my opinion, rightfully so. But also because they got this guy has got to be made an example of. He has to be made an example of, and they're going to send him because, well, a again, the world is watching, and we everyone knows what has happened over the past say year, and certainly it will happen again. So this guy is going. Whether you believe he did it or not, and you're entitled to your opinion. This guy is going. Um. Now, how they hide this guy in jail and not put him in general population will be a miracle, but okay, I think, I think I, he's going to jail. 
that is what I believe, and rightfully so, in my opinion. Moving on. Moving on. There's a lot going on this week. Wow. Which story, which story should I talk about first? Jade, should I talk about Nike sneakers, governor of New York? Well, what should I, what do you like? Let's go with the sneakers. That story is today. This works. Let's go. Jay's not even telling me about which story she likes. The other week she wanted a bite and she had a, when Jay came on the air two weeks ago, she had a fly swatter in her hand. She was ready to go, get me. But meantime, I'm asking her about sneakers. I can't get a sneaker response. Pull ups or shoelaces. <laughs> I'm getting no help from my home people here. Okay, what's going on? Nike. The sneaker company Nike denies involvement with Lil, Lil Nas X's Satan shoes. And the Satan shoes, they denied collaborating with rapper Lil Nas X on his controversial Satan shoes, which feature a drop of human blood and demonic imagery. Um, we do not have a relationship with Lil Nas X on, it says MS. CHF, but pretty much mischief. Uh, they, and that was reported to NBC in a statement. Nike does not design or release these shoes, and we do not endorse them. Okay. It says, the old-time road singer, that's his song, raised hell over the weekend when he released a devilish version of Nike's classic Air Max 97 sneakers, featuring symbol 66, excuse me, X slash 666 in red ink and a single drop of human blood. The shoes, the shoes actually cost $1,018. $1,018. dollars for a pair of sneakers made in collaboration with the company Mischief, at least that's what I'm calling it. Also display Bible scriptures from Luke 10, 18, which references Satan's banishment from heaven. All righty then. We're updating that story to the next installment. Nike wants little Nas X's uh, Satan shoes destroyed amid boycott threats. Nike is having a what? is having a devil of a time with little Nas X's blood and few sneakers. The sportswear giant wants every pair of the viral rappers Satan shoes destroyed because they allegedly duped customers into thinking Nike supports devil worship. All righty then. I, I, that's sort of a leap, I, a little bit of a leap, but if they believe so, okay. Nike made the extreme request in a lawsuit against Mischief, the creative agency that designed the custom Air Max 97s that were released with a limited edition of 666 pairs alongside Little Nas X's new single, Montero. Hmm. Nike blames Brooklyn-based Mischief for conservative backlash against the iconic footwear brand and follow the launch of the shoes, which are decked out with a pentag with pentagram pendants, inverted crosses, and soles, which supposedly contain a drop of human blood. That means if someone gives up one liter of blood, one simple blood transfusion worth, with one drop each, that is a lot of shoes. Let's see, in the short time, since the announcement of Satan shoes, Nike has suffered significant harm to its goodwill, including among customers who believe that Nike is endorsing Satanism. And that was filed and that was contained in the complaint filed Monday in Brooklyn Federal Court. Uh, well, I'm looking at it. Yeah, they have a pentagram attached to the, uh, whatever that little, I'm not sure if it's to one of the lace loops or a little, what is that little cert loop thing that's attached to the tongue of the uh, sneaker? But yeah, there is a pentagram there. It is written in red. I don't see the drop of blood unless they're referring to the uh, red writing on it. Let's see. One person referred to it as pure evil. And Nike distance itself. Okay. We're, we're going on. Yeah, here it is. Let me see it. Here it is. It is attached to the shoelaces. 
of the uh, of the sneaker. That's what it is. Witten and the little inverted cross is on, you know, that little like pull loop on the tongue, like the top of the tongue, when you tie your shoes, that little uh, material uh, thing you put your finger in to pull up, that's where it is. Uh, uh, let me see if I can find the, uh, what's in the box? Artwork with like satanic imagery on it. Okay. And you're hearing a motorcycle out there. It's pretty nice out today. Nike shares on, in the stock market went down 0.04% at 133 a share. Okay. Wait, wait, we're getting better. Hold it a second. We got one more installment because Nike is now suing Satan shoes, or suing over Satan shoes with human blood. The uh, 1,018 or 740 pound trainers, which is what the shoes are. They are basically trainer shoes. You can wear them wherever you got to wear them. It says again, in v, you know, inverted cross, pentagram with the words Luke 1018. All right. Yeah, they are, they are suing for this. Well, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out. I'm not all that familiar with the case. I've worn Nike shoes before. They're pretty comfortable. Like every, like a lot of people have worn them. Um, yeehaw. Yeehaw, yeah. Um, to me, I'm looking at the shoe box, which certainly shows, uh, we'll say devil art. I see the pentagram, which I know can be removed. Uh, the inverted cross, I you know. Pretty much it's just the Paris. If you don't tell me there's a drop of blood, I mean, I mean, if it, if it really is a drop, I don't see it, but Nike is claiming it's there. They have a right to a lawsuit. Mischief and little Nas X will, will fight it and we'll see what happens. But no one's returning the 666 pairs of shoes. If they were sold and that, and that limited quantity, which sold out immediately, which you will find it on eBay or anywhere else at who knows what kind of a markup, probably like, I don't know, $8,000 or whatever they're going to charge for it. No one is returning their, uh, their shoes. Sorry, gang. That's just the way it goes. Um, listen, I don't write this stuff. What else is going on in the world? There's a lot going on in the world. But before I start ranting and raving over one thing or another, be careful fake vaccine vaccines and certificates being sold on the dark net the dark net is that part of the internet which the average person does not know about or look for I had to drink a little coffee there that is where you can find out buy and see all sorts of things uh, in this case fake vaccine certificates being sold yeah and that's, that's the new traffic trend because that will be in the man. Not everybody wants to get a vaccine. And I understand that. Whether I agree with it or not, I'm not going to tell you, but it's, you know, it's everyone's entitled to believe what they believe. Um, but not every business has to respect your beliefs, which is not everyone has to respect what you think. There, I remember reading a couple of weeks ago in Israel, where they said, well, they cannot force you to take a vaccination. No one can force you to put a needle in your arm and take this thing. Um, it's they, Their claim was you will be left behind. Now, what that means is as everything opens up, restaurants, theaters, concert halls, anything, businesses, you will not be allowed in as long as there were, as long as the as long as, as Israel requires you or has a mandate, or if an individual business wants you to be vaccinated to enter their, their place of business, their property, and you don't have it, you don't have to be allowed in. Now, if people don't care, that's again, good for them. But for the people who do care, anywhere in the world, they will now be able to buy fake certificates like fake ID for the kids who want to go into the adult clubs, to the big people's clubs, want to drink. This is now where you don't have to get the shot. You have a, a fake ID. 
And who's going to know the difference unless somebody wants to test you for it? So that is what's going on on the uh, internet. How much is this? Let me see. They're setting up long time. Okay. The vendors seem to be setting up interest. Yeah. Seem to be interested in setting up long term relationships where they can deliver vaccines in large quantities over the long. Yeah. For people who want to buy their, want to get their uh, injections from the dark web, your vaccines will be from $500 to $600 a piece. That's if you want to get fake. If you want to get a, um, a fake vaccination card, that will be $200 per card. Keep it in mind. So, okay. But if people are willing to take fake vaccinations, I don't even know what that means. It doesn't even define what's fake about it. I'm sure it's not, nothing more than, the, than putting a syringe full of water in your arm and you want to pay 600 bucks for it knock yourself out that's what's going on on the internet i've always said internet's useful for a few things but generally speaking it's a vile place it's not governed by anything no one country has juris jurisdiction they can only block out for their part of the world you know their cities but it really is no one governing law over it let's see what else is going on as the time is rolling on here what else have we got going on this one here may take a while because uh, I, I, maybe it's because it's the governor of my state. Maybe it's because of all that's going on. I am not talking about Governor Andrew Cuomo's problems with the nursing homes and, and the fudge numbers given to the federal government. This is a new accuser. Sherry Vill speaks out alongside her lawyer. And she's claiming that in 2017, Governor Andrew Cuomo manhandled her and forcibly kissed her while, ta while touring her flood-damaged home in you know, 2017. He did so in a highly sexual manner. The whole thing was so strange and inappropriate and still makes me nervous and afraid because of his, the, his power and position. And Sherry Bill is 55 years old, married mother of three, um, I'm still afraid of him, and I, but I am no longer willing to remain silent. All right, so what happened here? Let's see. One second. Let me scroll up. The alleged encounter occurred in May 2017 while Cuomo was touring Greece, New York, which had recently been ravaged by floods. That's the word they use, ravaged. Bill, whose house was among those damaged, invited Cuomo into her home and expressed dismay at its condition. Understandably. That's when the governor looked at me, approached me, took me by, took my hand, pulled me to him. He leaned over and kissed me on my cheek. I was holding my small dog in my arms, and I thought he was going to pet. I thought he was going to pet my dog, but instead he went to squeeze between between the dog. What? He went to he went to squeeze between the dog and mine, and kissed me on the other cheek. Oh, I got it. Okay which I felt highly sexual, man. All right. Um, I am not sure what people are hoping to, what, what should happen to this guy. He's already said that he's not resigning. There are no charges filed against him. Yeah, there's going to be an investigation. There's going to be a lot of things. Um, and I'm not trying to say right or wrong to anybody. Wait, let me, let me what's this here? Okay. But somehow, with besides my usual comment of why now, this is a story a woman claiming he kissed me in 2017 on the cheek. In, in terms of all that's going on in the world and the right and the wrongs of the world, I'm really not, uh, personally, I'm sorry. I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even saying I'm sorry. People are, people are going to get upset over what I'm about to say. Okay. Write to me at upfrontfrank at gmail.com and tell me so. This is not something I'm too concerned about. He touched my shoulder. He grabbed my hand. He kissed me in the cheek. I ha I'm watching people all my life, you know, in some harmless way who have either been kissed, 
kissed, put their hand, leaned over, put their hand on someone's shoulder when they whispered in their ear, gave someone a hug when they were upset, someone's upset or crying, you take them by the hand. Whether it's a man or, you know, whether it's man, woman going back, either way, these are not terrible things. I'm sorry, people, but these are not terrible things. I know everyone has it out for this governor, but th this ain't it. I, I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're hoping to accomplish. You can vote them out next time around, but I don't know that you're going to get all that far with this guy. Not on this. Not not on this. I don't know what. Out of nowhere, and you know, we're in 2021. We're coming up on May. Four years ago, he gave me a kiss on the cheek. Believe me, there are people who are terrified who had truly violent crimes, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, that, that were done to them. And <coughs> they get less consideration, which I think is wrong. But this isn't it. I mean, I, I had a cousin who, who is no longer with us, sadly, who everybody he saw, all his friends, his family, hey, how are you? Hands in the face, on the cheek. How many people have I kissed where, you know, you put your hands on the shoulder? And, am I to believe that if this is considered a crime, that, let's reverse it for a second. Let's just reverse this. Every time a woman ever said anything to me and put their hand on my shoulder, either whispered or you're talking or wanted to get my attention and I don't know, they, they, they tapped me on the shoulder. Um, if, it was, if it was anybody who was, like I said, crying and either I took their hand or they, or they just gave them a hug and they hugged back or maybe I did someone a favor and I got a kiss on the cheek, was I supposed to press charges on somebody? Was I supposed to file a complaint because of because of that? It 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 that does that makes zero sense to me. I'm sorry. It, I, I keep using that term. I'm sorry because I, I don't know what other phrase to use. It just makes zero sense. Now, for whatever reason, you had Governor Cuomo in 2018 when he was running for re-election, and there were no reports of anything. Now, I can't believe he, he discovered all new habits at this stage of life. So, I mean, probably he was sort of this way for the longest time, but, you know, touchy, feely, whatever it is. Um, and no one ever said a word. Six months ago, seven months ago, he was being considered for the United States Attorney General. We heard nothing. And I'm still wondering now, today, what is coming up? What is so special about now that everybody is coming forward and saying, he touched my shoulder, he touched my arm, he had put his hand on my back. I'm just sort of, yeah, I'm just sort of not getting it. I mean, there's been plenty of times and I'm going to stay with someone hug me, forget man, woman, whatever it is. An old friend saw me hug me. I didn't ask for that hug, but I got it. My case, I appreciated it, but I didn't ask for it, but I got it. I don't consider it a crime. I really don't consider it a crime. That's how I figure about it. I've had people who were, I've known people who are dr so drunk, I knew they couldn't walk on their own. I just grabbed hold of them and, and pointed them in a straight line and we, and we went wherever they had to go. It, it, these are, to me, these are not the greatest of, uh, greatest of, 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 of crimes that, that this needs to be a, a consideration. Now, they're going to investigate them for the number of deaths in nursing homes during, uh, during the pandemic in New York State. And if there's a problem there, well, then he will deal with it as it's uh, described, as, as it needs to be. But somehow, somehow, I just don't get it. And forgetting a hug or a kiss and considering it a sexual thing, am I to believe that if I walk by my friend, the guy, and I, and I tap him on the shoulder or pat him on the back, that this is an initiation of a fight? Is that the idea? It's, it's, it's a fight? Because I'm, it wasn't a requested touch on the, on the shoulder? It wasn't... Uh, I, 
I'm not quite sure where people are going with, with, with all of this, where, where it's going to be next year. I was, I was having a conversation the other night on, on, uh, on YouTube. One of my favorite singers as of late that I've been following through the internet, you know, for quite a few years. We were joking around while, you know, while she was doing her show on, on, uh, on YouTube. We were all just talking as a big group. And there was joking around about sex and all that, the usual, the usual conversations, nothing, nothing important. And, and she made, she asked the question, what has happened to sex? So I typed in virtual reality and the social media happened to sex. <laughs> and when she read it, she said, well, what kind of porn are you watching? Well, I'm not watching porn, but this is what happened because the, the people are having relationships through the internet. They're having relationships through virtual reality. There already is a program where you could wear your VR helmet, virtual reality, VR helmet, and you can have a full relationship. You can see yourself holding someone's hand, having a meal with them, having sex with them, and you're never leaving a chair, which is, I guess, which is why social media, I'm on a few different apps where people are actually falling in love, thinking they have boyfriends and girlfriends out there when they've never even met the people. And that is what's going on. The world has turned to the internet for their, for their romance, their friendships. And when things go wrong, none of them are showing up. When things go right and you want to pop a bottle of champagne at home, none of them will be there. And when you think you're in love, think again because these are all places where they'll talk to somebody else next. Like, like loving your bartender. So when you leave the bar, somebody else sits in that chair and that means it all starts all over again. It's all the same thing. Uh, going back to Governor Cuomo, uh, ladies, I, I, um, I'm just not seeing it. Not on this subject. Investigating for the nursing homes, and I have been talking to people older than me, male, female, my age, a little younger, a little older, much younger, and a lot of us just aren't seeing it. I know there are plenty of people who are, but we're just, some of us just are not seeing it. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. What's going on here is I need a drink of water because I'm ranting and raving. Mm. This one. This was a First Amendment case. This was interesting. This is an important ruling, a very big ruling. I got this. Well, of course, I get a lot of my stuff on the New York Post because they pick up a lot of different news feeds. So that's why I use it. And also when I hit the printer button on my computer, it prints really well. Okay. And the headline is, Professor Who Refused School Order on transgender students' pronouns wins in court. And that goes, an Ohio college professor who resisted his school's orders to go along with transgender students' preferred pronouns has won his First Amendment case before a federal appeals court. In a unanimous ruling, the sixth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals said that Shawnee State University violated Professor Nicholas Merriweather's rights of free speech and free, free exercise of religion by punishing him for resisting school rules that forced him to address students in terms of their choosing. In other words, if he went boy or girl, man or woman, they wanted the, they, them, he, whatever it was, they, them, you, me, whatever it is. And he went before the judge and wound up winning the case because he has the right to appeal. He has a right to appeal the case, of course, and he has a right and he sued the school and he sued anyone he could because he has the right to refer to you any way he wants. Mr., Mrs., Ms., boy, girl, again. And that's what he wanted. That is an important ruling in America right now because a lot of people are choosing designations for their sexuality 
that leave them where they want to get rid of any kind of male female terminology that you can find just that's just what it is i was reading one a couple of weeks ago to you where it said one of the schools in manhattan want to get rid of the term mom and dad because it denotes it indicates male female and well like i said this is an important ruling and that that establishes precedent and you're going to see that you're going to see that used in a lot of cases <coughs> excuse me had a cough um what else is going on here nine shot yeah i was reading this um on the 27th nine shot two dead in, two dead in virginia beach shooting well that means eight shootings in two weeks eight shootings in two weeks well i sort of have a feeling i know what the mad rush is and it's going to sound trivial and small and petty but i apply this reasoning to the same reason why we have more covid cases now than we did a, a little while ago month ago two months ago the weather the weather it's nice out everyone's coming out people are in places people are in stores people are in restaurants kids are going back to school people are all over the place and this was at the virginia virginia beach on a crowded ocean front it says in virginia beach late friday night that was the other day and this is what happens this is why you don't see too many you don't see too many things happening when it's freezing outside. Now Virginia can get pretty cold still. You're you're heading south, but in America, but you're north enough. It can get cold there. But people aren't on the beach. And they're not they're not all sitting outside eating and they're not all in school and they're not all in stores. And the weather has now gotten nicer, which is why we have more shootings, at least in my opinion. And in my opinion, which is why we are seeing new spikes in COVID cases around America, because the weather gets nicer. The weather is great. The weather is a great policeman. The weather is a great doctor. The, we the weather doesn't get rid of everybody, but not everybody is willing to do whatever it is they were looking to do if it's really raining badly out. Not everybody is looking to do what they want to do if it's freezing out. Uh, usually you're looking for ideal weather or as close to it as possible. If you have a day that's 70 and sunny, that's your day. Um, and yeah, Virginia's getting warmer. And that's what's going on around America. Eight shootings, two weeks. That's a lot of storying in 35 minutes. Look at us go. Um, yeah, this is what's going on, people. So when you hear, when you hear others saying, this is not who we are, yo, yes, it is. Yes, it is. What I did like, the story that I did like, I got from March 26th. I got it on Fox News, but Fox News is just covering someone else's talking. Sharon Stone, by the way. Hold it. Sorry about that. Had a little noise in the background. Sorry about that. Um, Sharon Stone, actress, tears into cancel culture, saying it's the stupidest thing that she has ever heard. Well, excuse me, ever seen happen. Uh, pretty much what I've been saying. You sort of can't make things go away. Can't sterilize history. But according to uh, Sharon, I think cancel culture is the stupidest thing I've ever seen happen. Uh, and that's while she was discussing her new book, The Beauty of Living Twice. And that's coming out, well, it just came out uh, today. I think when people say they, they, that they feel that they feel and mean it's offensive to you, it is a brilliant opportunity for everyone to learn and grow and understand each other. Well, pretty much I've been going along that theme. It's good to keep it around. That way we can get better. 
The outspoken actress expressed that we all come from different ages, different cultures, different backgrounds, different things and have different experiences, different traumas, different upbringings, different parents, different religious backgrounds, different everything. And thus, folks should give people an opportunity to discuss things before you wipe out the, their entire person over a statement or a comment or a misunderstanding. So pretty much, I have to agree with that. She also had to stop being so small. People have done so much worse than one sentence, things like that. Um, I sort of got to agree. I, well, I've been talking about how canceling people to cancel culture for a long time. I am not a fan of it. Um, again, I know the new, over the last few years, people are upset about one thing or another, but you cannot wipe out history. You just can't. Um, I mean, whether you're, you know, in a few years, let's go 10 years, anyone that was in World War II who served in it or was a, a survivor of a concentration camp will be gone. They'll just be gone, most probably in 10 years. Does that mean that once they're gone, that it's just all part of history, that if you don't believe it was, if it was as bad as it was, or you were offended by what happened, that it should be forgotten, wiped off the face of the earth, gotten rid of? Should, and I'll go, I know that's a, bit, that's a bit extreme, but it's as perfect, it's as good an example as I could think of. Um, if you're going to look for things in film that you consider offensive or needs a warning label and you're going for what we refer to as low-hanging fruit, the obvious places like we discussed Gone with the Wind when there are so many out there of movies and films that you do not know does that mean it never happened because you want because you suddenly discover it we have to get rid of it um, because that's what it sounds like that's i mean i joke around when i tell people the cocktail plan but that's pretty much what it becomes like excuse me um i had to take a drink yeah i'm not i'm not for canceling i am for improving on I'm for improving on, and a simple thing with the, it doesn't matter. It is not even a matter of being offended. I was, you know, sitting with my family the night, and we're looking at pictures of very old cars, cars from 1930. Well, they're far, far more inferior to any car we have today, as good as they look, but they're nowhere near the car today. We don't need them. Should we wipe them off the face of the earth because we don't need them? We have new ones. No, we keep them. We keep them. We know the history of all the cars. It's important that we know the history of, of, of a lot of how things started, how things began. It's very important. I mean, there's a reason why when, when we do, when we celebrate Women's, Hit, Women, Women's Day, you don't hear me just saying, yes, women go women. I usually bring up someone in particular, and I, I, I use them as an example. Because it's important to know where things come from, how things happen, how it all started. That's what I believe. That's what, that's what I always believe. It's important to know in baseball, it is important to know that whether you believe in right or wrong about what we used to call the old Negro Leagues, that it should never be wiped from history. It's important because that is where that is where baseball players like Satchel Paige and 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 and, uh, and all the and all Jackie Robinson and so many others that were ignored over time. But it's historical. It's important. It, you need to know about it. You need to know where, that this is where so much great talent and for, for whatever reason, the lesson of it, it should be remembered. It should be included in, in, in schools, I believe. Um, 
when I when I talk about racism, I, I you've heard me use before. This is probably not the worst example you're ever going to hear, or the best example you're ever going to hear. But I often mention because of this popularity, the former heavyweight champion Jack Johnson. It's a good study. It is a good study. It's it's it really is. It's he was an interesting man. He was. And at that time, unbeatable in what it meant to what, what was called white America. These things are all important. Wiping, wiping out, canceling, warning labels. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what it is. Let, let things be seen and judged either way on their own merits. And judging something does not mean a negative. Judging is not a negative word. To judge is simply to form an opinion. That's all it is, the judge. That's what the judge in court does. When there's no jury, you have the judge. The judge hears the case, hears the arguments, hears everything, and then forms an opinion. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's good for you. Sometimes it's not. If I look at people and I, I look at someone, I say, I think you're the best at what you do. You're the best looking. You're the most wonderful human being. I've ever. That is my judgment. That is my opinion. I'm still being judgmental. I'm just judge. In this case, I judge for you. So yes, let things be seen in their own light. Don't don't taint the going in. Let things be seen. You want to talk about it afterwards? That's great. But don't don't to me contaminate the first experience by by putting a negative light on. Just turn the light on. People will see it for what it is especially now in this day, 2021. People can see things as they are. Not everybody needs help. And if they're too young to really understand on their own, and hopefully their parents are with them or there's an adult with them, someone will be there to explain that the blood's not real on camera, that there are not big giant gorillas or dinosaurs walking around the streets fighting, that there isn't really a monster walking around with bolts hanging out of his neck, and that not everything you see on film is real. And that's just how I figure it. That's me. That's just me. Let things be seen as they are. Listen to my show as it is. You don't need to, um, you don't need a buffer going in. You know, you don't need a buffer going in. Just turn me on, hear what I have to say. If you like me, come back. If not, you know, I'll hate to see you go but judge things as they are, encounter them as they are, see them for what they are. And if you like what you've seen, so much the better. Um, I'm on camera here, because when I go onto social media in some spots, you're gonna see me in a video and I'm drinking out of a gallon water container. I should have had a nice glass. Um, but since we've recently what is, oh, I like this. I like this. Well, people, well, people, if you don't like women, you don't like people of color, this is great because it was, it's Dasha Taylor. This is great. She, this is a genius kid. This is a genius kid. Um, she's 17 year old, was named one of 40 finalists in the Regeneron Science Talent Search country's oldest most prestigious science and math competition for high school seniors and what she invented this is a good this is great she invented a color changing suture stitches color changing sutures to detect infection let me read a little this is i got this on smithsonian magazine and this story is from well from march 25th from from the other day she's 17 in Iowa City West High School in Iowa City, Iowa, began working on a project in October 2019 after her chemistry teacher shared information about statewide science fairs and with the class. As she developed her sutures, she nabbed awards for several regional science fairs before advancing to the national stage. This January, Taylor was named one of the 40 finalists in the, in the Regeneron Science Talent Search, the country's oldest 
as I said, most prestigious science and math competition for high school seniors. Uh, says, as any science fair veteran knows, at the core of successful project is the problem in the need of solving. Taylor has read about sutures coated with the conductive material that can sense the status of a wound by changes in electrical resistance and relay information to smartphones or computers or patients and doctors. With these smart sutures, sutures with these smart sutures, you could help, well, they could help the United States. The expensive tool might be less applicable to people within develop, in developing countries. While the internet and mobile technology is sometimes lacking, and yet, there, the, and yet the need is there. It says on the average, 11% of surgical wounds develop an infection in a low and middle incoming countries. So people of modest means or broke or very poor, you get lots of infections. And that's according to the World Health Organization compared to be two and 4% of surgeries in the United States. And that is a lot. So that's what she did. This is a large story. It's a very good story. This is a good story. And for all of you racists out there, and all of you kid-hating, women-hating, she, she's 17, she's black, she's a kid, she's in high school, and she's smarter than you, and she's smarter than me. And I think this is great, and I hope they pay her accordingly. And I'm showing an image of this. They have, yeah, this is it. They're showing an image of the original suture, pH 5, where it's getting lighter, and pH 9, where it's getting darker. This, it's showing the, the change, the effect, the change. I think this is fantastic. Um, it says, after three days, the purple fades to light gray. Oh, wow. Listen. Uh, good. Good. That's when the infection is there. Oh, wow. This is good. This kid's, this kid's my hero for the week. I think that's fantastic and good for her. Congratulations. And make, make sure your doctor knows who this kid also is also, because you may be getting surgery. And what is it? Well, we're coming up. It's 10 minutes to go. We're going okay here. Yeah? Well, I even made this cup of coffee for myself that's getting cold with my old cat lover uh, cup. Uh, we had Passover this week, as a lot of us uh, did. We um, we celebrated the exodus from Egypt, the Jewish exodus from Egypt. We celebrated the passing of the plagues. And if you've ever seen the movie The Ten Commandments, you'll see where they put lamb's blood over the doorway, the home of that, well, at that time, the, well, Jews, the Hebrews. That is so the plagues cannot enter the home. And you are protected. And Passover is all about uh, the passing of the plagues and leaving Egypt, leaving slavery. And the calendar right now is at 5781 in the Jewish calendar. And there we go. Now, I'm not quite sure what the big feast was at the time, but in my family, we had some brisket, some turkey, and I got to believe six or seven different types of carbs. Thankfully, this year I had it at my cousin's house and there was a vegetable or two on the table. But no, I was pretty much eating meat and like the same thing in repetition. It was all delicious, by the way. But wow, that's a lot of carbohydrates. But it was good. And it's not that I'm so observant in all of the traditions, but I do respect them all. And some of them I enjoy. And anytime there's a big dinner to be had, you know I'll be enjoying it. Um, Easter is coming up soon. We'll be seeing what's going on there. Speaking of Easter, you know that candy peeps you see at the grocery store counter? They're either yellow or blue, whatever other color they come in. Well, the new social media trend, people are melting peeps on their pizza. This is vile looking. I got to tell you, not everything on social media should catch on. Not that peeps cost so much money. It just looks disgusting. It looks almost as disgusting as when people were cooking kiwis into their pizza and it looked like, like sores, like a, like a sexually transmitted disease. Leave pizza alone. A couple of weeks ago, people, the trend was dipping your pizza in milk. So pizza, people with like pepperoni or sausage and a big glass of milk, dunk like it's a cookie. 
Oh, nasty. Ugh. But that's that's what people do. Matter of fact, if you go on TikTok, you know, the uh, 30 second or whatever uh, video site where everybody becomes famous, supposedly. They bring them back. Now it's called the TikTok uh, pa pass out challenge, but it's really the old pass out game. Where you, where you either cut off your own oxygen supply until you pass out, so you can feel the, what is it, euphoria when you're waking up, or you take enough deep breaths and throw off your normal breathing rhythm, and then someone hold, compresses your chest or your carotid, or your arteries in your neck until you pass out. Well, one kid, 12 years old, practiced on himself and paid for it, and he died. Parents, I keep saying it, your kids are on social media. They are looking at the internet like people who think, who really do believe that professional wrestling is real. You know, the outcomes, you know, the, the outcomes are, are, are determined. What goes on, those are well-trained. Not everybody can do it. If you're thinking it's fake in terms of every last move you see, and I see videos of people like jumping off the steel cage, they're jumping off the roof of their house onto a table somewhere. What you see is not what you should be doing at home. That is why you, you read that disclaimer, which I agree with. Do not do this, do not try this at home. Without a, you know, Do not do this unless you're under professional supervision. There's a reason why. This is a kid that died because I'm not sure if, if he, what used to be called, what, what adults would call autoerotic or auto asphyxiation where you tie up something where the knot slips when your body goes limp and you have that feeling when you're waking up. But how do you know? He's 12 years old. What kind of knot he tied, what he did. And again, parents, watch your kids. You don't need to be liked that badly. Trust me, at 12 years old, if they hate you now, they're going to love you when they're 16 and need more adult things. They're going to love you. Don't worry about it. They can, they, can, they can love you while they're dead or they can hate you while, while they're alive. Take your choice. In any way, things are going pretty good. It is 3.54. If you'd like to try one of these shows on your own, not my time slot, you can have your own. Write to us at skiescrescentradio at gmail.com. Skiescrescentradio at gmail.com. You could write to me and tell me what you think. Upfrontfrank at gmail.com. Again, upfrontfrank at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from people. And uh, keep track of Jade. Go to jadezabrickmusic.com. See where she's going to be putting her music next. She just finished her social media run of a week. I'm sure there'll be more dates coming up shortly. And you'll get a list of all her music, as you can find her on YouTube also under Jade Zabrick. You'll find her. She's out there strumming on her old banjo and that is the story well i'm not playing music right now but you if you could think of a song that you can attach to this show today email it to me let me know what song you think fits this show let me know i'm always curious i have a song in my head i always have a song in my head i'm half crazy anyway i in my head i can be having two conversations thinking of Samad and what uh, uh, other event and hearing a song in my head at the same time. Then again, I'm left-handed. I could do these things. So, you know, everybody, yeah, let me know what song you think fits. And then maybe, well, maybe we'll see what we can do. Maybe if you send me a pack, a big batch of cash, we'll think of it. So, I don't know. But anyway, I wouldn't mind hearing from you. Feel free to email me. Tell me what you think. Write to Jade. Tell her what. Tell us what you think. Write to the station. Everyone, tell us what you think over there. Maybe you'll do this yourself. There are all kinds of things for people to talk about. Everyone should be heard, and we want to hear from you. Matter of fact, so do your friends. Everybody wants to hear from you. And with that, I'm about done. So I will see everybody next week as we go into April. Um, April Fools is coming. Don't fool yourself. There are things you can do that can really hurt. Don't, don't fool yourself and don't take any TikTok challenges. If you want to do a TikTok challenge, sing a song or do a dance. It's harmless. It's harmless. Maybe you got some talent you didn't know about. Better off that way. All right, gang. 
I will see you all next week. Have a good night.